Let's think now about the overall structure of the brain. Now, a good way to think about the brain is it's a bit like a boxing glove. So if we draw a sort of a boxing glove like this, this is rather similar to the brain. And below the front, we have the brain stem. And behind that, we have the cerebellum. So what we've drawn here really is the three main areas of the brain. This top part of the brain is called the cerebrum. This is the brain stem down here. And this bit at the back is the cerebellum. So the three main areas of the brain, the cerebrum, the large upper part, then the brain stem below at the front, and then the cerebellum. And the cerebrum is itself divided into different lobes. And these lobes correspond to the bones of the skull that we've just looked at. A particular lobe of the cerebrum is underneath the particular bone. So for example, this is the frontal lobe here. And then there's a, a gap, uh, a small fissure there. It's, it's actually called um, a sulcus. It's a, a, it's a sulcus. But then behind that, here, the back of the brain is the occipital lobe. So the occipital lobe of the brain and then this lobe here is the parietal. And that leaves this lobe here the temporal. So we've got the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. The four lobes of the cerebrum, the top part of the brain. The other two main components of the brain, the brain stem and the cerebellum. The brain stem is itself divided into three sections. The top part is the midbrain. The middle part is the pons. And the lower part is the medulla oblongata. often just called the medulla. So frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, brainstem divided into midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata, and then the cerebellum uh, behind. Now the interesting thing about the brain is that certain parts of the cerebrum have specialised functions. So for example, just here, in this area of the frontal lobe, we have an area of brain called the motor cortex. And this is where all of the movement of the body originates. So whenever I want to move a part of the body, I think about the part I want to move, and then the appropriate part of the motor cortex in my frontal lobe, on the opposite side of the brain, generates a brand new nerve impulse. And the very fact that I wish it to happen makes that new nerve impulse happen. It's under the control of will. And actually, the body is represented in a small man called a homunculus. Hom hom homunculus just means small man. So the parts of the body are represented more or less, that would be the hand there, more or less upside down. The lips occupy quite a, a large part of the um, the motor cortex. So that is the motor cortex in the frontal lobe and then we have this division called the central sulcus. The area of the motor cortex is a gyrus, it's an, it's an, in, an elevated area of the brain and uh, it's sometimes called the pre-central uh, pre gyrus.
It is the gyrus before the central sulcus. But then just behind this, in the parietal, the first part of the parietal lobe, there's another small man, another homunculus. But this one is in the sensory cortex. This is called the postcentral gyrus. Because it's after the central sulcus. And this is the sensory cortex. So all sensation from the body is detected in this part of the brain. And of course the brain is in two hemispheres. So everything I'm feeling with the left hand side of my body, I'm feeling with my right hand sensory cortex in the parietal lobe, in my right parietal lobe. Everything I'm feeling with the right hand side of my body, I'm feeling that in my sensory cortex in my left parietal lobe. Now, as the name implies, occipital is to do with vision. So the occipital lobe generates the sensation of vision. So everything you're seeing now, the colours that you're seeing round about you, this video picture, the world when you look out the window, all of that, all of those images are actually generated by the occipital lobe at the back of the cerebrum. Now there's also an area here in the frontal lobe, and that area is called the frontal eye field, the frontal eye field, and that controls eye movement, and it's on the opposite side, so the right, the, the eye field, the front eye field in the right hand side of my cerebrum is controlling the movement of my left eye. The frontal eye field in my left cerebrum, in, in the frontal lobe, is controlling the movement of my right eye. And this allows us to put our eyes anywhere we want to. We can look at whatever point in space we want to look at. For example, when you read across a, a line of script in a book, when you read across the words, it's your frontal eye fields that are controlling the movement and the position of the eyes. Now just here, there's an area of the temporal lobe, and this is the auditory area of the brain. This, this is where we hear with. So the nerve from the inner ear, from the cochlea, the auditory nerve, goes to this part of the um, temporal lobe and generates the sensation of sound, the auditory area of the brain. There's also an area here where we understand speech. This gives rise to our understanding of speech and language, language areas of the brain. So that's just a few examples of some specialised areas within the cerebrum. There are many other areas, of course, in the cerebrum which don't have specialised functions. These are sometimes called association areas. So in the cerebrum we have areas of specialised function and we have generalised association areas. So here we see a diagram I've made before. This is the frontal lobes here, which we can just colour in. Then the parietal lobe is this area here. The occipital lobe at the back. the temporal lobe here. All of those, are called, of course, are lobes of the cerebrum. Then the area of the cerebellum here. And then finally the area of the brain stem down here. Midbrain pons and medulla oblongata. And this is continuous with the spinal cord. So here we have the central sulcus, and this area in front is the frontal lobe. Then here we have the parietal lobe behind that. 
the temporal lobe underneath. And we can see the occipital lobe, which generates vision at the back. We can also notice on this diagram the area of the cerebellum, the area of the brain stem, the midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. And of course the spinal cord is continuous with the medulla oblongata. So here we have the area of the frontal eye fields controlling eye movement. Here we have the area of speech generation. Now this area of speech generation here is also referred to as broker's area. And it's on the left hand, it's in the left cerebral hemisphere in most people, in about 90% of the population. It's on the left side. Here we have an auditory area generating hearing. And here we have an area for speech understanding. And this area here is also sometimes referred to as vernix area. Vernix area. And of course we have the motor cortex and we have the sensory cortex. The motor cortex in the frontal lobe, the sensory cortex in the parietal lobe, the motor cortex in the precentral gyrus, the sensory cortex in the postcentral gyrus. So here we see a model of the brain with the frontal lobe in orange in this case, then the parietal lobe in blue, the temporal lobe in yellow, and at the back the occipital lobe in green. And one thing this model shows quite nicely is that the cerebrum is in two cerebral hemispheres. So this would be the left cerebral hemisphere, because this is the front of the brain here, and this is the right cerebral hemisphere. Now on this side, they're painted so we can see the individual lobes of the brain. And on this side, it's painted so we can see the areas of the brain. So here's the central sulcus. And this is the motor cortex. This will be the frontal eye field. And this will be the auditory area. And we can see clearly that the brain is in the two cerebral hemispheres, the left cerebral hemisphere and the right cerebral hemisphere. Below on this model, again, we can see the grey cerebellum in this case. And again, painted two different colours, but we have the, the brain stem, midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. And this little bit here is the pituitary gland sticking out underneath the brain. Now we have another model here which shows the areas of the brain quite nicely. And this is like the head in cross section. So the head's like been chopped in half here. And we see the bones of the skull around the outside. Sinuses here, nasal cavities. This is the tongue, teeth, mouth, nasopharynx, oropharynx, the ringopharynx further down. This will be the epiglottis here and the trachea. And we notice that we see the cerebrum up here. And this area here, this white area here, is called the corpus callosum. And that actually contains connecting fibres that join the right and the left cerebral hemispheres together. Here we see the cerebellum. And this is the brain stem just here. 
midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. This area here is the foramen magnum. And this is the spinal cord, which as we see is continuous with the brain stem. This area here would be the thalamus. And below the thalamus, as the word suggests, we have the hypothalamus. So this shows us the areas of the brain in cross-section. So here we're looking at the two cerebral hemispheres from above. This is the front and this is the back. So that means this is the right cerebral hemisphere on this side and the left cerebral hemisphere on that side. And we notice that the two hemispheres of the brain are separated by a longitudinal fissure. A fissure is just a, a bigger gap than, a, than a, a sulcus. So there's a bigger gap separating the two sides of the brain. So this is the right frontal lobe here and the left frontal lobe here. So that means this area here is the motor cortex. That's the left motor cortex, so it's controlling the right-hand side of the body. This is the right motor cortex, so it's controlling the left-hand side of the body. Here we have the parietal lobes, left parietal lobe and right parietal lobe. That means this must be the sensory cortex here. And because that's the left sensory cortex, it's controlling the right-hand side of the body. And here we have the area of the right sensory cortex, which is receiving sensation from the left-hand side of the body. So we've got the area of the frontal lobe here. Then the area of the parietal lobe here and the occipital lobe at the back. That is the view from on top. So here we see the diagram of the cross section of the brain. First of all we see the connecting fibres of the corpus callosum connecting, going in and out of the plane of the picture, connecting the right and the left cerebral hemispheres large connecting bundles of white tissue, white matter, nerve fibres. Here we see the uh, cerebrum. We don't see the lobes on this diagram, but we know they're there, frontal, parietal, temporal and occipital. Here we see the area of the uh, cerebellum. brain stem with the spinal cord and this area here in the middle is usually referred to as the diencephalon and it consists primarily of the thalamus and the hypothalamus also the pineal glands in that area as well